Quran, chapter number 25, verse number 53, which says that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has let free two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and palatable, and the other salty and bitter. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. The same message is repeated in Surah Rahman, chapter number 55, verse number 19. Marajal Bahrain al Takyan. That we have let free two bodies of flowing water. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier, there is a barzakh which is forbidden to be trespassed. When the commentators of the Quran, when they try to understand this verse, all of us know very well, and we knew it earlier also, that there are two types of water, sweet and salty. But they could not understand the verse of the Quran, which says that there are two types of water, sweet and salty. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be test passed. There is a barzakh. The Mufassirins, the commentator could not understand what did it mean. Today, after science have advanced, we have come to know that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, sweet water flows into the salty water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. This transitional homogenizing area, according to the Quran, is called as the barzakh. It is an unseen barrier. And this has been testified and verified when this verse of the Quran was showed to Prophet Zahay, who is a very famous marine scientist and a professor in oceanology in the University of Colorado in USA. And he said that what the Quran mentions 1400 years ago has been testified by science recently. And this phenomena can be seen even with the naked eye at the Cape Point, the southernmost tip of Cape Town in South Africa, where one type of water flowed into the other type. We even see that the colors of both these waters differ. Another good example is in Egypt when the river Nile flows into the Mediterranean Sea. And the best example is the Gulf Stream. It flows for thousands of miles. It starts from the Gulf of Mexico and goes to the east side of North America, travels upwards, then goes eastwards and travels to the west coast of Europe. It flows for thousands of miles, but yet the two waters are distinct. And if you're traveling in a ship towards the extreme of the Gulf Stream and pick up, take a bucket of water from the left side and a bucket of water from the right side, you'll find that one is sweet and the other is salty. Even the temperature between the two, they differ. Imagine, Quran speaks about this phenomena 1400 years ago. In the subject of biology, the Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّا شَيْنْ هَيْ أَفْلَا يُمِنُونَ We have made from water every living thing. Will you not then believe? Imagine in the deserts of Arabia, the Quran says, we have made from water every living thing. Who could have believed in it? Today after science advanced, we have come to know that every living creature has got cells and the basic substance of cell is cytoplasm, which contains about 80% water. And today science tells us that every living creature contains about 50 to 90% water. Quran mentioned in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 45, we have created every living animal from water. The Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 54, we have created every human being from water. In the field of botany, previously we did not know that even the plants have got sexes, male and female. We have come to know about this recently. Recently, 100 years back, 200 years back, 300 years back. The Quran says in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 53, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sends on water from the sky. And with it brings various pairs of plants, each separate from the other. The Arabic word used, each separate from the other, meaning male and female. The Arabic word used in the verse of the Quran is azwaj, meaning spouses. 
sexes, male or female. So Quran says that every kind of plant has been made into sexes, male and female. And today science tells us that all the plants, they have got male and female sexes. Even the unisexual plant, they have distinct characteristic of male and female. The Quran says in Surah Rath, chapter number 13, verse number 3, we have created every kind of fruit in pairs, two and two. Even the fruits are created in male and female. And today we know that the superior plants, the end stage is the fruit. Before that stage is the flower, which has got stamens and ovules, male and female. And pollen comes and fertilizes, and then we have the fruit, having distinct characteristic of male and female. Even the parthenocarpic fruits, even they like banana, figs, certain types of pineapple, oranges, they have distinct characteristic. These are unfertilized fruits, flowers from unfertilized, the fruits obtained. Even they have distinct characteristics of male and female. The Quran says further in Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 36. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created every animal in pairs and human being in pairs and even things which you know and don't know. Allah says he has created everything in pairs. So besides human beings, animals, plants, even things which we don't know. Today we know that things like electricity also have got positive and negative, the electrons and protons. And many things which we don't know. So Allah says, He has created everything in pairs. Things we know as well as things we don't know. In the field of zoology, the Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 38, we have made every animal that lives on this earth and every creature which has wings and flies in the air to live in community like the human beings. Today we have come to know that the animals and birds, like the human beings, they too live in communities.